Hey guys, Steven here back with another video and today I'm going to show you how you can turn any filter, any preset, any LUT from, you know, Visco, maybe an Instagram filter or from like another app that you like, a Lightroom preset. I'm going to teach you how you can turn that preset into an Instagram filter that you can use and that will show up on your profile. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I created my acid wrap filter, which has been used like millions of times. I believe it's like five or six million impressions at least by now. And it's actually very simple. I'm going to show you how you can get approved for it as well as how you can just make it. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button and let me know if you want more Instagram filter tutorials. I haven't made a lot on this channel yet, but I plan on making them in the future. So if you're interested in stuff like this, make sure to comment below. And yeah, with that being said, let's get straight into it. So right here, we're in Spark AR. So the first thing you want to download is Spark AR. Spark AR is the only software you can make this in. Next, you want to go to the description and download this patch. So by default, there's no option to sort of import a preset. You have to download this patch. So shout out this person, Posit Labs, uh, for creating this patch or else this wouldn't be possible. So you want to scroll down here and press download demo project. Next, you want to download a neutral LUT. I'm going to leave a link to that so that you don't have to search this up. Basically, this palette, like these set of colors will basically tell Spark AR what colors to add to the filter. And because this is neutral, this means if you sort of import this as is, there will be no change to how it looks like. But if we color grade or like add presets to this exact photo, those exact colors from that preset, from that filter will be applied to our final filter. So if you use Visco or like another editing app on your phone, all you would do is you would save this on your phone, open it up in an editing app, like a photo editing app, and then apply the filter to it. So that's exactly what I'm going to do in this video. So I'm going to go ahead and save this and I'm going to go into Photoshop uh, just because that's the photo editor I use. I'm also going to open up one of my photos that I've taken in the past just so that I can see like what changes I'm making and like what preset I'm actually applying. Right here, we have the neutral light and right here we have the photo I'm working on. So all I'm going to do is add a gradient map. Um, so this is how I actually created my uh, acid wrap filter. So let's just say I wanted something like this. Obviously, um, your filter probably won't look like this. It probably look more normal. Like maybe you just increase contrast or something like that. Maybe you just wanted to boost contrast and saturation. Like you wanted a very saturated image, something like this, right? You would just apply these same adjustments to this LUT. So you can actually just open it up in here. Um, I'll just apply the same effect. And all I do is just export it as simple as that. But what I will say is you don't want it to be too harsh, like too much contrast or too much saturation because it'll look weird in the final product just because your filter will be used in different lighting situations. Like it might be used at night and it might look good in a photo that's taken in the, in the night, but it might not look good with a photo that has a lot of light in it or vice versa. So I've noticed in a lot of my filters that I made in the past, a lot of them look bad at night. So you want to tone down on sort of the strength of your filter. Also, people have like different skin types as well. So it might look good on darker skin, but works on lighter skin. So I would just go for a more neutral look. Uh, but because mine is like not so neutral, this filter right here is sort of like extreme and you won't even see the details a lot. So we don't really care about the skin tone because the skin tone is like purple in this, uh, which is fine with me. So I'm just going to export this and I'm going to show you how you're going to sort of do this in Spark AR. So the first thing you want to do is you want to extract this. All you really need is the patch. So this, so I'm just going to drag it onto my desktop, which I already have. You just want to drag this into Spark AR and you have to drag it on the assets tab right here and it should just show up. Next, you want to go to view and show hide patch editor. And if we drag on this patch, you can see there's three different points to it. So the first one's texture, the second one's light, and then, and this one's also texture, but it's a little bit different than this texture. So the first thing you want to do is you want to import your LUT. So that's pretty simple. So this is the LUT I want. I'm just going to drag it in. So as simple as this, you can just drag it here and connect the first one to LUT. Makes sense, right? Next, we want to connect the camera texture to this section right here. So we want to click on camera, press texture extraction, and just drag on that. And there we go. And lastly, we're basically going to apply like a layer on top of the existing filter. So this is like a, a mock-up person. I'm going to turn on my integrated webcam so you can see me. 
so basically we're going to create like a layer that's just for the filter on top of me. So we do this by creating a canvas. So we can right click on here, press add canvas, and then we're going to add a rectangle. So we're going to right click on canvas and add a rectangle. And we want to fill up the whole screen. So we're going to click on width right here and press fill width. Do the same thing with height. And right now it's checkered um, because it doesn't have a material. So material is going to be the filter. Um, the material could also be like a photo. It could be whatever. It could be any texture. But the material we want is the filter. So we're going to press add where it says material. And we're going to select on material. And we're going to press right here where it says texture. This arrow. And basically it'll show on our patch editor and we just connect it. And then boom. That's how you do it. And the great thing about this is it's actually super, super easy to just switch the type of preset or switch the LUT photo. So let's just say, oh, I don't want to do this. So you can save this as like a template, like this project file. So just press uh, file, save. So you can just go back. Um, let's just say maybe you don't want this extreme thing, right? You don't want this uh, look. Maybe you want black and white. Just apply like a black and white filter, for example. Export this. And you want to import it, so you want to drag it into assets. And basically, you just remove the existing LUT. And there's going to be an error because nothing's connected right now. But we can just attach it to the LUT. And now it's black and white. And so when it comes to actually publishing it, so you want to go to File, um, Upload and Export. And you want to make sure that um, the file size limit works. I also forgot to mention, for your LUT, you want to make sure there's no compression. And the reason you want this is so that the colors don't get blocky um, or look bad. So you want like the colors to turn up perfect. Usually you would just compress like things like text or like images because they do take up a lot of space and you need to like meet a certain file size limit. If you upload and export, it still works. Like we're still within guidelines and you can actually upload on Facebook as well if you want to. So when it comes to uploading it, you actually need like a Facebook uh, account that's attached to your Instagram account. So I already have that. And so you would log into your Facebook that is connected to your Instagram account. So you can see right here, Steven Van is a page that I have. And it has to be a page. It can't just be an Instagram account. So this uh, Facebook page is attached to my Instagram account. If you don't know how to do that, just uh, search it up. So that's how they know to like upload it onto your Instagram profile. So if it's already linked, you can just press uh, publish a new effect and it will just open it up in a new tab. But if it's not linked yet, and maybe you want to make this effect for someone else or something like that. You can just export the file. So I'm going to call this black and white. You would go to publish. You can choose uh, if you want it for Instagram or Facebook or both. Uh, like most of the time you would just do both. You would upload the file. And right here it says the publisher. And it's my Instagram account, right? If you do it right, it should show your Instagram account. And here's where a lot of people mess up on. Right here, it says demo video and icon. So before you can even publish it, you need a, an icon. So you can just like upload whatever. Like I'll just upload black, like a black background or whatever, right? Um, when it comes to video, you have to save this filter first. And then you want to press test device. Copy this link or you can send it to your Instagram, which actually works, by the way. I'll just screen record this real quick. So right here, I just got a notification. Try black and white. boom right so you would film this you would press right here the top the download button you would send this to yourself or you could send this to someone else and you would use this as your demo video so i just downloaded like a video of me that i just recorded you would just upload this right here well basically just show them how your effect works and if it violates any guidelines which it won't and also, if you go on your profile and it does get accepted, this is sort of the preview that shows up. But yeah, that's about it for this video. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to hit the thumbs up button and also check out the description. Obviously, if you guys want to follow this tutorial, my name is Steven and I'll see you in the next one.